So you have an important job interview in C Sharp ahead of you and you would like to prepare yourself in the best possible way. And there are of course a bunch of things that you can do. You can look into different projects that they could come up with or you can look into different questions that they can come up with. For projects we have just finished a series of four different projects and we are going to add some more projects in the future. So you can of course check out the link in the card where you can find the link to the whole playlist. But in this video and in the following ones, we are going to cover specific questions that you could be asked and I'm going to give you a possible answer. Of course, there are a bunch of different ways to answer questions. Sometimes there is just one right answer or at least a direction of an answer. But in this video, we are going to check out the most important ones. And then afterwards, we're going to look into more and more important ones. So basically, we're going to cover over 50 questions that you could be asked during a job interview for C Sharp. So definitely check it out. Even if you don't need it for a job interview, if you just need it for, let's say, university or you just want to refresh your C Sharp knowledge, this is definitely going to be the right video for you. All right, and also check out the other videos, definitely. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and all of the good stuff because this is really going to help the YouTube algorithm for our channel. But at the same time, it's definitely going to help you because you're going to see all of the good other videos that we are posting regularly. And yeah, enjoy the video. So let's start with the first question. What is a class? And by the way, if you want to read the whole article with all of the questions and answers, definitely check out the link in the description. You can find it there. All of the 50 questions and answers, well, 52 actually, you can find them directly on the website. All right. A class is a template to create an object. It contains properties as well as methods. We can create many instances of a class. So here, for example, we have this class called student and we have a bunch of data members. Well, in this case, just two. And then we have one method and this method is called print details. And here we can then implement the functionality that should be run once print details is called. Now we can create an instance of such a class or an object of such a class by just going ahead and saying class name, object name equals new class name and then the parameters. In our case, we don't have any parameters that we need to pass to this class because we don't have a constructor. So we're going to look into constructors in this list as well, of course. Then what are the main concepts of object oriented programming? It's encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism and inheritance. These are the main concepts of object oriented programming. And that is something that is used in many different programming languages. C sharp is just one of those. Now let's look into those individual topics. So first of all, encapsulation. It's a process of wrapping functions and data members together in a class. It's like a capsule, which is a single unit. Encapsulation is used to prevent the unauthorized, unwanted change of data from outside of the function. And now let's have a look at that. So in this code, I'm using encapsulation. So I have this class called user and I have two variables string address. So you can see there is no specific access modifier. And then we have a private string name. In order to access those from another class, such as our my program class, I need to use encapsulation because otherwise I couldn't access them. So I'm using getters and setters. So here, for example, string address, by using this property address, I can now access the address variable this field that I created here up top. And I can also set it by using that property here. The same goes for name, as you can see here, public string name, get return name, set name with the value that was passed. Now, if we look at it from our main class, you can see we are creating a user. We can set the name of that user and we can set the address of the user by using the set accessor. So we are invoking that set accessor. And when we get a value, for example, when we want to write the name or the location, we are invoking the get accessor. If you now try to access the name directly, so let's say you want to access name instead of name. So not the capital one. And you want to set that with, for example, Dennis, in my case, 
you can see that you get an error because that variable is hidden. It's inaccessible due to its protection level. And this protection here is basically encapsulation. Quick pause. In this video, you learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. What is abstraction? Abstraction is the method of exposing only the required features of the class and hiding unnecessary information. So let's try to understand it with an example of a motorbike. A rider knows the color, name and the model of the bike. Still, he doesn't know the internal engine and exhaust functionality. He doesn't need to know that, even though some people will do that because they are really into bikes and they will be <laughs> opening up the bike and know everything about it. So abstraction focuses on providing access to the specific functionality without exposing how that functionality works internally. What is inheritance? Inheritance is one of the fundamental attributes of object-oriented programming. It allows you to define a child class that reuses or inherits or extends or even modifies the behavior of a parent class. The class whose members are inherited is called the base class. The class that inherits the members of the base class is called the derived class. You can find a bunch of other names for that as well. Parent, children class, super, base class. There are a bunch of different names for that. But basically you always have the inheriting as well as the inherited class. So let's look at an example here. So we have class A and then we have an inner class called class B, which inherits from class A. And in class A, Quick we pause. have a private variable in this video, you learn something value, about C Sharp. Which and is if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become and a real C Sharp developer, we then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things that value. you need to know about so now, C Sharp. If you look at this so class you're going to learn B, how to it do the doesn't basics, even have how to a use object-oriented programming, how to value. use WPF but in order to see, create it your can own use user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use from link, class a, and how to because create your own games class. using Unity, so now and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description So let's create an object of B by creating a new A.B. So this creates an object of the B class. And then we can go ahead and just write the get value which will just return value, which in turn will return 1,337. And if you run that application, you will see that that's actually the case. So in this case, A is the base class and B is the derived class. So A is the parent and B is the child class. At this point, the question could come up, what is an object? And we have used objects already in this video even, but let's just quickly also cover this specific question. So an object is an instance of a class through which we access the functions of that class. We can use the new keyword to create an object. A class that creates an object in memory holds information about the functions, data members and behaviors of that class. So let's look at this class called employee in which we have a private string called fname and lname, so first name and last name. And then we have the methods. So for example, the display method, which basically just displays the first name and the last name in a little text saying full name is, and then first name and last name. And then we have this method called set name in which we can set the name of those two variables. All right, so we are setting the first name as well as the last name directly by calling this method. Now, let's go ahead and create an object of employee so this is the object itself. So this is basically already the answer. You are creating a new object by using the name of the class as well as a name for that object equals the new keyword plus the name of the class once again. And then you pass in potential parameters here for the constructor. But as I said, we're going to see how constructors work in a minute. And then we have to set the name at one point if we want to display it because otherwise 
those variables would be empty and display would run into errors because it can't find f name and l name as they would be empty. So we're first of all setting those variables and then we're displaying them. So you see we're setting them to John Grande and then we're displaying them. So now let's look at constructors. A constructor is like a method with the same name as the class, but it is a unique method. Even if it's not created, the compiler creates a default constructor in memory at the time of creating an object of the class. Okay, so in this case, we have a constructor even though we have not created one by ourselves. So that's something that will be done by the compiler. The constructor is used to initialize the object with some default values. Then there are different types of constructors. For example, the default constructor, the parameterized constructor, the copy constructor, static constructor, private constructor, and that's it. So these are the different types of constructors that there are. So we're going to look at one of them. So let's just create a constructor here real quick for our employee so that we don't have to set the name with this set name method, but instead we're going to set it when creating the object itself. So in this case, it will be the parameterized constructor. So you can see we have an employee which gets a first name and a last name when we create an object of it and then we set the variables directly. So these fields that we have here, we are setting them directly when creating the employee. The default constructor is a constructor without any parameters, as you can see here. So you could add the code that should be run if an employee is created. So in our case, right now, we are creating an employee using the default constructor. And as I said, this will be generated automatically even if you don't implement it by yourself. Then the parameterized constructor is what you can see here. This is the one that you're probably going to use most of the times. Then you have the static constructor, which just uses the static keyword. A static constructor is used to initialize any static data or to perform a particular action that needs to be performed once only. It is called automatically before the first instance is created or any static members are referenced. Okay, then we have the copy constructor, which allows us to copy an other object of the same type. So in this case, we are just copying another employee and we're saying that this employee that we're creating, this object that we're creating of this employee class should have the same type of information. In this case, it's going to have the employee's first name as well as last name assigned to it as well. So we're basically just copying the other object here by using the copy constructor. So let's go ahead and use this parameterized constructor real quick. Instead of setting the name this way, we are just going to do it in the constructor itself. So here we're passing the values directly. We don't need set name anymore. And now we can run it again. And you can see we still get this information. Full name is John Grande. As there is a constructor, there is also a destructor. And the destructor clears out the memory to free up resources. It is managed automatically by the garbage collector. So for example, this one here, system.gc.collect. So this is how you can call the garbage collector manually, but it is also done automatically once there is too much garbage to collect and then it starts to collect it. So as I said, it's done automatically internally. However, if required, it can be done explicitly using a destructor. So let's look at a destructor here for our employee. So this is it. You just use the tilde, then employee, and then you can run whatever code you want to run in order to release resources. So let's look at polymorphism because that could be also another question. What is polymorphism? Well, polymorphism is the ability of an object to take on many forms. And there are two types of polymorphism. We're going to look at both of them. One of them is compile time polymorphism, which is achieved by method overloading, what you can see here. So we have the method typing, and then we have the method typing, and they are overloaded. So this one overloads the other one. So the other one, this one here, and you can see it overloads it by having more information passed to it. So we have the same method name, but they are using different amounts of parameters. So in this case, typing, this method here requires a Boolean that we then can use inside of the function, even though we don't do that specifically, but we could do that. All right. And then we can run different code. So depending on the amount of parameters or the type of parameters that you're passing, you will get different results 
also meaning different types of code executions. So different function bodies or method bodies will be executed. So this here is compile time polymorphism, which is achieved by method overloading. Now there is also runtime polymorphism, which is achieved by method overriding. So let's look at another example here where we are having two classes and they are inheriting from each other. So one of them is inheriting from the other. So we have cell phone and smartphone. Okay, so in cell phone, we have this virtual method called typing. And in smartphone, which inherits from cell phone, we have an override void typing. So we are overriding this virtual method typing from the base class with our own implementation. So here we're just doing something else. And this concept here is called runtime polymorphism. So these are the two types, compile time and runtime polymorphism. And then the final question for this video, is C-sharp code managed or unmanaged code? And the answer is C-sharp is managed code because common language runtime compiles the code to intermediate language. So to put it very simply, managed code is just that, code whose execution is managed by a runtime. In this case, the runtime in question is called the common language runtime or CLR, regardless of the implementation. So for example, Mono or .NET Framework or .NET Core, CLR is in charge of taking the managed code, compiling it into machine code and then executing it. On top of that, the runtime provides several important services such as automatic memory management, security boundaries, type safety, etc. All right, so that is it. These are the first 10 questions for your C Sharp interview. They will help you to prepare and I hope you are going to be successful with your C Sharp interview. If you did, then please leave a comment. And if you didn't and you still want to leave a comment, yeah, you can do so anytime. Also, don't forget to like the video and hit that subscribe button because we're going to upload a bunch of good stuff to this YouTube channel as well as the other videos that will come for the other 42 questions which are still missing that will prepare you for your C-sharp job interview. All right, so check out one of those two videos and see you in the next one.